Right, here we are at Belvedere Driving Test Centre. This is where I pass my driving test. And... I forgot to put my hat on. Okay, leave a like on the video if you like my crazy hair. If not, I don't care. Right, turning left. So as you come from the test centre, you might park on the big main road that we're on now. And the examiner asks you to take this first road on the left. It can catch you off guard. It's like, whoa, I just got started. Taking the next left. Maybe you're going to do your parking straight away on this road. It's a classic road. Look at this. Nice little gaps. Nice and wide. Pull up next to the blue car. Do some parking. Pretty easy. Not too stressful. Take your time. Now, I know we can go this way as well. So turning right. See how I've turned again, like the position we talked about on the previous videos. Nice <laughs> Audi. Um, if you haven't seen those two, they were Erif test routes. Um, Erif and Belvedere both share same test routes. They're super close to each other. So if you're doing a test at Erif or Belvedere, you can always look over both of the test routes. They're exactly the same. So if you're getting bored about, you know, watching the same video again, just have a little search for Erif or Belvedere. They're both the same. Right, now roads like this, we talked about speed on the previous videos as well, is a 30 mile an hour legally, however, I'm doing 20. The reason why I'm doing 20 is because there's just not enough space. The number one rule of driving, put it in the comments. I'm tired of saying it. <laughs> I've had enough. Right, at the end of the road, turn left. Inside mirror, outside mirror, shake it all about. Signal left. And follow these yellow lines, look at that, pointing, just like a roundabout. I'm not even looking right. Now I've got here, oh, okay, just double check. Yeah, ooh, a bit hard to see there if the park cars. So let's focus on that positioning first. Turning left, follow the yellow lines or follow the curve of the road. You're turning right on this center line here, or if you've got box junction like that, in that box, on that arrow. Line up the center of the road and turn there. Okay, we're going towards Bexley Heath, ladies and gentlemen, onto the A2 dual carriageway. Yay, fun. Okay, third exit. So I signaled right to start with. Any exit after 12 o'clock on the roundabout, if you think of the roundabout as a clock, any exit after 12 o'clock on the roundabout is a right turn, so you'll need a right signal. If it's the first left, signal left, and any exit after 12 o'clock, signal right. If you're going straight ahead, no signal. Only signal for your exit. So as you pass the exit before the exit that you're going to take, start to show your exit signal at that position. Some things that I really struggled with when I was learning was when do I signal when I exit the roundabout? Someone actually got me to the traffic light and you got the roundabouts on the uh, traffic lights on the roundabout. And the traffic light just before I was going to exit, they said, You see here? So, yeah, they were like, Yeah. So, thank you. So, some of the little simple things. Sometimes when we're learning to drive as well, we were scared to ask. Ask, man. I mean, I'm scared to open my mouth these days, but say what you feel, say how you think see if there's something happening there and then if there is you're with your instructor whoever's training you and they'll help you right so if you say the wrong thing or whatever that's called self-commentary by the way and your instructor will actually pick up on that and be like oh hang on a second let me help you with that so it's good it's like and a lot of students as well they might not do the self-commentary because they're not all comfortable with with self-commentary but what they'll do is they'll make a mistake so they'll physically do it rather than verbalizing something and then we can see it happening right i want that road i want that road pull over to the left scott or can i take the next left I think I can. Next road on the left, Scott. Mirror, mirror signal. No, I don't want that road. There's a road, I'm gonna show it to you. It's been a while. It's been um, whew, a few years since I've done Abbey Wood test routes. Uh, I say Abbey Wood, sorry, I mean Belvedere, okay? Um, I used to live in Abbey Wood and I know the roads pretty well. 
and there's this one road I really want to show you. It takes you off from the roundabout, which we're going to go have a look next. I really hope I get this right. And then it goes through these side roads into Bexley Heath, right by where the bowling place is, okay? Now, that whole section is super important, so I really want to highlight that on this video. Just before we get to the A2, I'm making eye contact with the other road users. They might be nice and let me out, but it's okay. It's not really that busy, so I can wait. And then we'll just take a position next in the queue here. At the roundabout, we're turning left, so it's the first exit. My signal's on left here. My steel's very smooth, which it turned off. Uh, then the signal stay on. If the steering's a lot, it cancels. Looking at the wheels, taking my opportunity based on the wheels of the vehicle on my right. The wheels are a guarantee. They show you where the vehicle is going to go. Signal is not so much of a guarantee. So what I'm trying to say is don't rely on signals. Look at the wheels of the vehicle. The wheels will be your guarantee about where it's going. If you can see the driver, that's nice as well. You might see where they're going to turn by watching their body language or speed speed is an excellent one as well so it's very unlikely for someone to turn at high speeds so if they've got high speeds very unlikely to turn right i'm just going to stay here in the middle of the road and i'm just going to let this ambulance go i put my hazard warning lights on to warn everyone of the hazards ahead and i didn't slow down that vehicle when i turned right look see so as long as I'm not slowing down when I'm turning, it's a safe time to turn. I'm not too sure if you'll like this saying. It really helped me. We're gonna to get to the whole part that I was talking about earlier. It's coming up, okay? Um, that was what really helped me. What really helped me? What were we just talking about? Move signal on this road. Come back to me, maybe. Let's go. Anyways, we've got more important stuff to come up. See that bicycle? See how it bends to the left? This is not a turn. The examiners will now give you the direction. Take the next road on the right. So I'm turning left here, or moving the car left, but I'm signaling right. Because look at it, it's right there. So make sure you know this road. Center light, center line. Anyone there? Yes. Oh, they turned, thank God. Otherwise, I probably have to stop here because I can't see any space down there at all. So if there's an oncoming vehicle now, the only space I can see is for them to move into this side road and to go around me because I don't see any space here whatsoever. So remember, always anticipate worst case scenario. This is the next hot spot. So we just talked about signaling right and turning left there for this next road on the right. This one here, can't see if there's any oncoming traffic. So I'm just gonna come here to the giveaway lines, check to see who's behind me so they don't get annoyed. Now I can see, check over my shoulder or right mirror, move out and get straight as possible here. So before you get to width restrictions, always use your reference points. If you know the size of your vehicle, brilliant. Just practice, practice, practice. If you wanna use a cheat code, use a cheat code. You can see exactly how far away you are and less space less speed that's what i said put in the comments rule number one driving i'm tired of saying it they're moving over to that side they're slowing down that's showing me their position and their speed two very good important clues there they're slowing down and moving away from me so what am i going to do i'm going to speed up and get going right now the alternative is that they're not slowing down so if you have an oncoming vehicle that's not slowing down, do use an exercise caution and be prepared to come to a nice, slow and gentle stop. Right, turning right and roundabout, I'm going to drive on the circle. I'm going to look here because they have to give me priority, but look at them. They just come so whoosh, quick through there, yeah? So just take care to avoid an accident, but I do have priority because I'm on the right. So the right side always has priority at the roundabouts. So that's a little roundabout, a little hot spot there. I'm slowing down for this vehicle here, just to make sure it's got room to get through. It's a bit close to me. Now, if that vehicle was on driving test, they could potentially fail the driving test there because I had to slow down. I had to act for that vehicle there. That vehicle did not have priority, so it must wait until it's safe for it to emerge out the side road. Now, we're coming in towards Bexley Heath now. This is the whole part where we'll be leading down towards the A2 dual, dual carriageway. And this is the 
probably one of the most important parts right here. Okay, so the examiner won't give any direction here. They'll say follow road markings or signs, okay? So the road markings here are showing us left only, and there's a sign over there that says no right turns. Now, do I need to signal? Probably not. Is it harmful if I signal? Is it gonna mislead anyone? Is it gonna cause an accident? No. I think if there are pedestrians here, and even the motor cars, bicycles, whatever, the road users, it would help them as well. Now this bit, this is a pedestrian crossing. There's no signs, just this funny color, which isn't black and white, which is normal. Bus is blocking, this is a roundabout. Go into the inner circle, that tiny circle, even touch that tiny circle. This is a bloody crossing as well. So make sure that you can see these crossings, which unless I know they're there, there's no signage, I would probably not have seen them. Next roundabout, make sure you position here. Not there, and don't go in the middle. Stay in your lane, lane discipline. Make sure you signal left once you pass the first exit, second exit straight ahead. We're coming down towards the A2, dual carriageway. Now, there's different ways you could go. Normally they'll turn you right at this roundabout here. If I remember correctly, let me just make sure. So otherwise I'm gonna end up getting lost. So at this roundabout here, it's not this roundabout here. Yes, it is this roundabout here. No, it's not this. Yes, it is. <laughs> Trolling you now. Just calm down, relax. Okay, turning right, third exit. Uh, on a serious note, if you feel like you've made a mistake or direction mistake, like me, not knowing where I'm going, ask the examiner. The examiner would definitely help us with the direction, even if it's independent driving. DBSA, leave me alone. Just be nice to people. Give them the direction. Stop kissing your teeth or saying, do whatever safe. Just say left or right. <laughs> now, the reason why I bring that up is because sometimes it's not safe to give direction, okay? I'm stonewalling myself now. So, if you're in a junction and you ask the examiner for direction, so you're going round and round and round about, and you're like, where do I go? they're not going to give us direction because it's not safe they got to say i'll go there and you, you know, swerve across right that could be an accident so they won't give us directions in those situations they will say that cliche when it's safe or what's safe okay so just go wherever you want at that point it doesn't matter as long as you're safe so don't worry if you go the wrong way remember you can ask the direction but it does need to be before the junction not in the junction now sometimes we're asked to follow the signs here towards Dartford A2 so if you just have a look there on the left you'll see the big white sign and that's the first exit turn left this is where we're going to join the dual carriageway section now the A2 which we were leading up to and then after this we're going to head back through Bexley Heath and Upper Belvedere towards Belvedere Test Centre. So we're kind of more than halfway through this route. And don't forget to, I don't know, have a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, or whatever, and leave a like. <laughs> oh, I can go, no I can't. Have a look to the right. Now that vehicle wasn't initially moving, but it did have priority, so I'm just gonna wait and let it go even if it's not moving because it's got priority. If I go and they go, it's game over for me. So remember, give priority to the right, the roundabout, look at the wheels. Now we've got speed change here. Doesn't look like we're gonna be doing 40, but we've got 40. And here, looks like it's a VIP lane, solid line. Ah, oh, but you see these small lines, small gaps? That's a slip road, so we're gonna have to enter, speeding up and checking over to the right side there, making sure it's safe and joining onto the dual carriageway with as much speed as it's safe to do so. Remember, we're going to join the road at the same speed that it's flowing at. That's the safest way to join or change lanes. I know it sounds scary, but it is the safest way to change lanes or join a dual carriageway. Build your speed. Just get practice with whoever you're training with and make sure you feel confident with this before attempting your driving test. Because it's only going to feel more nervous if we're not over prepared or prepared for our driving test. And whoever tells you practice makes perfect is wrong. Perfect practice makes perfect. So whoever you're training with, make sure they know what they're talking about because they might be teaching you, let's say, bad habits or not bad habits.
and turn around those laps. Right, now I'm taking the next exit, so I didn't need to change lanes, I stayed in this lane, followed this lane. The exit sign, if the examiner asks you to follow it, will say Bexley Heath Town Centre, speed change 30, uh, sorry, 40 to 30, and Bexley Heath Town Centre again, turning left, first exit. Mirrors and signals, roughly 10 to 5 car lengths from the junction, position to the left, follow the yellow lines. Speed, early vision, early decision, look. Make sure you maintain your left lane. Don't drift out there to the right, because that's lane discipline and we fail, especially if there's a vehicle next to us. So lane discipline, very important for the roundabouts, but remember the number one thing to practice through your roundabouts, if you just want to take away, speed on the approach. So the speed that you approach the roundabout is the number one most important part of roundabouts. Get the right speed, the rest will follow. I promise you, okay? Been doing this job for 15 years or over 15 years now, and that is it. If everybody just practice the speed on the approach roundabouts, so they won't have such a stressful roundabout because they'll approach calmly. Yeah, so it's all awesome. sweet. All right, Scott, your ADHD is kicking in again. Shut up. <laughs> okay, at the roundabout, Irif. Now, what lane do I use? There's a straight arrow here. The straight arrow there, so I want to use this lane to go straight because the left lane to go straight is the best lane to use to go straight. Good, early vision, early decision, nice. Stay on the left lane. Look at those stones, that's where we're going when no one drives. That's why the stones there. Stay on your lane, lane discipline is super important, especially if there's lines there on the road because it's very easy to see and the examiner might mark us down if they see us cross the line. Same again. So speed on the approach we talked about, early vision, early decision. Look at me pointing into the lane, following the lane, signaling as I pass the first exit for this gentleman or this person. So that they don't you know, potentially walk out. So signals are good for everybody. Everybody. I don't even know about animals, but you know, maybe even animals, who knows? Okay, so we're leaving Bexley Heath now. We're just heading on our way back towards Belvedere Test Centre. It's a roughly five minutes, unless I get lost, and we'll be back at the Test Centre. What we're gonna do is we're gonna park outside the Test Centre now, so hopefully this is where you'll finish your real driving test. So you might start where I showed you at the beginning of the video, on the main road, and then you might finish on a little one-way street, which is the Test Centre street, and right outside the Test Centre, they have their own bays for the test centre car park, if you like. So we'll have a look at that at the end. Won't be long now. Okay, so I just did one roundabout. No, I didn't. I did one crossroads there, so. And then the next junction will be the roundabout. We'll be turning left. And then we'll have a few roundabouts actually on the way back. Probably about three of them in total. And then at the test centre. Bexley bus station here. Morning triangle for the roundabout. Pickups. Here we have a side road and heavy traffic. So what I don't want to do is block that side road. So you see the learner here. If the learner is going to come and turn in this box junction here with the arrow into this road, I don't want to block this section here. So I want to make sure I can make my way across to the other side and not block the side road. Okay, we're turning left first exit. Mirrors to the left, signal to the left, roughly five car lengths from the junction. If you always signal five car lengths from the junction, you cannot go wrong. So five car lengths, I really like. You'll hear other instructors give six car lengths as an example, but uh, it doesn't have to be precise. But yeah, roughly five to six car lengths before the junction. Very, very good timing for the signal for all junctions. Okay, here just maintaining safe distance without going into oncoming traffic. So just checking my mirrors from time to time as I'm having to change my direction slightly out for the pedestrian there and then slightly back over just because of the oncoming traffic. So we're just every six to 10 seconds roughly. Talking about numbers. I'm just gonna check the mirrors. Especially if there's not much going on. We can just create a habit. And we just, one, two, three, done. And then maybe, yeah. Oh, one, two, three, there we go. All right. See how it just becomes sort of second nature, and eventually we're doing it subconsciously without 
There's four stages of learning, unconscious incompetence, conscience incompetence, unconscious competence, sorry, conscience competence, and then unconscious competence. And that's what we're saying. It's like tying your shoelaces. Don't even remember doing that. Gets to that level. So like I said, perfect practice makes perfect. A lot of instructors are actually very good at drilling these mirror checks in. So I get quite a few students from other instructors and the mirrors are excellent. And I ask them and they say, yeah, 100% right. It's a gift, it's a gift. Um, they drill those mirrors straight on the roundabout. Looking at the wheels, they're going straight. Nice, I can go straight. I'm not gonna give any signal because there's lots of steering going on there. I did check my mirrors though. So because it's one lane again, we do not need to signal for the exit. So if we're going straight, no signal on the entry. And if it's one lane and lots of steering, no signal for the exit. We're just straight through. Call back again. Can't say it enough. Number one priority for roundabouts, speed on the approach. This is not a pedestrian crossing, so I'm not gonna stop for this pedestrian. Important because there's a vehicle behind me. Similar to earlier when I had the bus moving out at the bus stop, just like this bus ahead of us here, it wasn't safe. I had a vehicle right behind me. So this is a mirror check. Um, change of speed is what the examiners call it. So if you are deciding to slow down and stop especially, must check the mirror to see who's behind us before we press the brake. It's the same for the signals. So we must check the mirrors before signaling. And then earlier, do you remember I was talking about just me moving out a bit here, moving in a bit? That's called change of direction. So we just mentioned the three categories for mirror checks. I'll give you a cheat code in a minute. So that's mirrors for signals, mirrors for change of direction, and then finally the change of speed one there, which is to slow down and stop. Okay, now we're gonna go straight again. Otherwise I'll get lost, I always get lost that way. So again, same thing, but did you see it? Lots of mirror checks, right? So that's lovely, just wanna do that. Can we turn right in that crossroad? So I'm thinking out loud now. Not too sure, actually. Okay, moving out early straightening up early so when i get to this gap with the bus and the oncoming traffic i'm already in the gap before i get to the gap so let me use this blue van so look how i move out early even over the line so before i get to the blue van i've got my safe distance to the blue van safe distance from the oncoming traffic most importantly i can see that safe distance because i've positioned early if i stay here on the left and i hide on the left, that's not gonna help the oncoming traffic at all. They're gonna not know I'm gonna move out and then I'll suddenly move out. So that's one thing we don't wanna do. Two, I can't see because I'm tucked in the air. I have to lean my head out the window to see the gap properly. So really move out early. Even if that means you're going over the white lines, it's absolutely fine. They're broken lines, there's gaps in them. You can drive over them and on them. As long as we're not causing a danger and we need to go over the lines, absolutely fine and i know a lot of people are worried about that so if you are looking for road markings excellent well done two don't worry if you go over them a little bit as long as we need it i don't really need it here so i could potentially get marked down for lane discipline here um, but if we do need it turning right is a good example or overtaking parked cars we need to go over those lines so like i said <laughs> if it's safe uh it's the phrase for today then yeah, absolutely fine. Now I don't want to block this roundabout, so I have to make sure that I'm not going to stop here and block that traffic on the right from getting through. So as long as it's flowing here, and you can proceed, get through, make progress, then these are all the words the examiners use. A lot of people think, why do I talk like that? Okay, because this is all on your exam sheet, all the words that I use, and the same words that the examiners and how they talk to us, okay? So do forgive me, and if I have a tone, I know I have a tone problem, okay? Don't listen to the tone, listen to the words. Right, going straight again. There's quite a few roundabouts going straight again. You see those mirrors, Just second nature. Every six to 10 seconds, one, two, three. 
Okay, well, that's back at the test centre now. I don't know if I can turn right at the crossroads up ahead. Yeah, I can. I can. Because I remember people failing. <laughs> oh, good times. Good times. Side road, follow the road. Reference points can be really helpful for lane discipline. So here I have the white line down the center of the road. That white line is my reference point, and that white line, if I look straight ahead, I can see it lining into the bottom right corner of my windscreen. So although I'm looking at the bus in front of me, I can still see this line, which has gone now, but you can see the tar line, I call it a tar line, the crease in the road. And that's lined up perfectly in that bottom right corner, right there, and that means I'm in the center of my lane. Best reference point, and that's for lane this event. Okay, Irith, turning right at the crossroads. Well, it looks like the van or bus. Coach bus. Um, it's turning right also. Two vehicles can wait in the junction. Coach, bus, whatever. One, two, come in. Stop, in line with the center in line with the center of the road that I'm turning in. Don't go further than this, because it depends what car you're driving. If you're not driving this car, you end up on the pavement. If you're driving this car, you'll be all right, because it turns more, okay? So center, so I'm not obstructing them, I'm not going into them, and then I stop in the center of this road in line with that one. Bang, turn right once it's safe, come 100% into the left lane. Always drive over yellow. People see a yellow bus stop and they go, Wee! and then there's a car next to them. Always drive over yellow. Always drive over yellow. Always drive over yellow. This is the same road that the test center's on. Just ahead of us, after the next bend, the test center will be on the right. Now, for us to get onto that road, actually, on the test centre road, I have to go all the way around the back of the shops near the test centre. That is another hot spot where people fail, okay? So let's just go have a quick look at that. And we've covered quite a lot on this route, which is really good. So, guys, look, seriously now, I don't care. But if you have learned something from this, but in capital letters, one T, leave a like. Over the line, absolutely fine, very wide road here. Again, just checking the mirrors every now and again, not a lot to do. So it's just nice to create that habit glancing through the mirrors, if it's safe, not aware of any motorbikes and the traffic following. Another saying that's quite nice, new road, new mirrors. So we join a new road, let's do the one, two, three, check through the mirrors, move out early here, slowing down, the space of speed, showing up early, see if you fit. Now you might be asked to pull up and stop here on the left, try not to block the driveways, unless the examiner says it's okay because the test center is there on the right. Now what I'm gonna show you is the back way around. So you could come round this way and there's a very naughty little road around the back here. There's two and I'll show you the one in particular where people don't see the road markings, don't do their observations, which is the number one reason why people fail the driving test and it has been for more than 10 years in a row and they fail, and that could be the last junction just before the test center. So don't lose focus until the examiner says switch the engine off. When the examiner says switch the engine off, that's it, it's game over. It doesn't matter what you do after that. Within reason. That's the end of the exam once they've asked you to switch the engine off. So you can take your seat belt off, you can put your seat back, you can relax at that point it's the test finished. So until that point, keep 
vigilant. Okay, we're going to take this next row coming up on the right. Where is it? Look at the yellow lines on the right where that person's walking. See the gap between the yellow lines, the gap in the houses, the gap in the fence. And look, there's a one-way arrow there as we enter the road. There's a one line across the center of the road. That means it's a one-way. But we must have the one-way arrows to confirm it's a one-way. Until we have these signs or road markings, assume it's a two-way. A nice little clue that it could be a one-way is all the traffic's parked facing the same direction. Look at that triangle in the tree. A bit hard to see. Have you seen the giveaway lines here? Because the examiner will not give you any direction. If I just breeze through here, not only is there oncoming traffic on the right, I can't see around this brick wall here on the left. So anyone could come out of there. So I need to stop here. And I need to edge towards. Oh, good, okay. Yeah, all right, now I can see. Now I'm gonna go. But if I don't do that, terrible shaving job. Sign here says right only. Don't get confused, it's not one way anymore. So we have to position here where this arrow is, okay? Some people might think they're still on the one way road from earlier where we had the one way signs. Here we've got two different lines. Double, double, most important, give way. That's where people exit. Single line, which we talked about earlier when we joined the one way, that's entry points. Single lines, entries, double lines, exits. They will show you it's a two way road. It can be very helpful for assessing whether it's a one way or two way road, road markings. Here we have the test center where the Prince of Wales pub is. So here is where my mum was waiting for me to get back from my driving test. And we're going to turn left onto this road here. And again, we've got the one-way arrows here. So we're going to turn left onto the one-way road. Make sure that you position to the left. Keep this side here. You can use the middle as you go down this road. And then the examiner asks us to pull up and stop here on the left, where this big space here is at the end. And there's no curb there, so I don't have to really worry too much about hitting the pavement. So I'm just gonna really bring it in, drag it over here, and just come to a stop. Now make sure you do signal when you pull over to stop on the left, it's very important. And make sure you do your blind spot checks and signal when you move off. That's the bit I left out. So we're really focusing on test routes here. Again, smash that like button. Click one of these ones over here as well. We'll see you on the next one. I'm gonna do another Belvedere video. And this is where I passed my driving test. So until next time, guys, stay safe.